Do you think Instagram triggers too much, for lack of better words, horniness in people? I see that with a lot of guy friends of mine. They see something on Instagram and either they use porn or they use dating apps to cope. Uh, I wouldn't know honestly because uh, I I don't know anyone who's using Instagram for that. To be very honest with you, for what? For to like just look at pictures of women. Or <laughs> to, like, Welcome to the world of men. <laughs> I guess I would like to hope that not all men are basically just sitting and using their Instagram to like scam on chicks. I I do think that a lot of guys' Instagrams, not not all, but a lot of guys' Instagrams are extremely sexual. Not all, but many. Especially when you're younger and your testosterone is much higher, etc. I, I think Instagram is a fairly sexual place. Instagram is full of sexuality, dude. I guess. Is My, it? It's not the same for women. I can't speak for women. Everyone's Instagram is different. My Instagram is like it tells me food things. It tells me geopolitical things. It tells me movie things. It tells me like random gossip and. For whatever reason, uh, I hear way too much about Taylor Swift and her dating life, but really? that just seems to be the news cycle. So, um, yeah, my Instagram is—I don't think hypersexual, to be very honest. But that just might be a product of who I am because I'm not on Instagram I, for uh, that. I get what you're saying. My Instagram used to definitely be sexual in my mid twenties until I realized that why the. F- Because my Instagram is so sexual, and I realize yeah, that it it's just it's a very normal urban guy problem. I remember unfollowing a lot of accounts uh, who had followed probably in my teenage, in my early twenties, and I remembered unfollowing a lot of uh, content creators in general, dude, hmm. or at least muting a lot of content creators because I was bored of their content, and my Instagram suddenly turned into a sports Instagram. So now I get. A lot of cricket, football, basketball, mm. MMA reels. I get a lot of motivational stuff. I get a lot of like productivity stuff. Uh, I remember there was this guy called Eric Jorgensen who had come on the show way back, like in 2020. He mm. said that your Twitter can be a very big self-help tool, but you need to regularly follow and unfollow accounts to tell the algorithm what you want. Mm. So I used that on Twitter, and then I actively started doing it on Instagram in 2020. So we were what, like 27 in mm. 2020. Around that time, uh, everything switched off, and now it's like. It's not really a sexual trigger anymore, but I see it being a sexual trigger for a lot of my friends. Your libido is more socially acceptable libido, now. Libido, yeah, true. Which it wasn't, you know, like when we were younger or whatever. Like our generation still did whatever they wanted to do. But that being said, at a societal level, I don't think it was still like so okay. You know, mm. it was still like bache shadi karke sex karlo. You know, mm. like it was still at that level and. People do what they want is a different thing, but like I just mean societally. Um, I think now maybe like people don't care as much. It's not so much of a hot button issue, you know, like whether people are having sex or not. Which thank God, I mean, like <laughs> how is it anyone else's business what people are doing, you know, behind closed doors? But uh, yeah, I think it's just that. I think I think it's more socially acceptable, and this generation is also like I think. A lot more open about what they want than we ever were, and uh, that's a great thing for them. Like more power to them, you know. Like uh, you're talking about Gen Zs. Yeah, yeah, they're they're a lot more vocal and a lot more expressive about what they want than what we were. Uh, what I love about them is like some of the boundaries they set in a work environment that we were too chicken shit to do when like we were in those situations. Like. I think I think they're good at setting up boundaries and going like these are the things that I will do and these are the things that I won't do, which can be a little bit of a double-edged sword because at the end of the day you need experience to actually you know get anywhere professionally. But uh, I like the fact that they set boundaries and they know their worth and all of those things. I feel that our generation didn't really have at that stage. Mm. Again, the flip side is when you see someone setting up boundaries like that. As the manager, as the boss, then you don't feel like giving the opportunity there as well. Yeah, you feel like giving the opportunity to a person who's willing to do anything. Yeah, and so I understand from a manager perspective why that might be, uh, like why that might be the way you want to go. But it's also not great from a work life perspective if you think of that person who you're hiring, who's like saying that I'll do anything. You know, like on some level, it's nice. because they have that kind of drive but on on another level they are going to essentially trample over any other thing in their life 
to just do this job or whatever and i i'm saying that from a place of experience because i was one of those people where i went like mai to kuch bhi karega tu bol and like it completely wrecked havoc on yeah. my personal life Th- that is very luck dependent if you had a very exploitative manager or an exploitative boss then maybe <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> then it's a bad situation but if if you're in a good positive energy work environment that kuch bhi karega mentality can really forward your career yeah but most that switch hasn't happened here yet it's mm, no, the fair. majority are still majority of managers are still exploitative the ones that like who see or kuch bhi karega and have enough integrity of their own to go like okay but i don't want to exploit you i appreciate the fact that you show up and you do what's more than required but here's the time that you need for yourself because you need to be a person those managers are very few and far in between coupled with the fact that like our indian luminaries also say things like oh people should work for 70 80 hours a week honestly that uh, kind of is you're exploiting whatever youth we have you know and uh, i don't know what good that's going to do anyone to have like an entirely burnt out working class by the time everyone is 